Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I am your host, Mike Merrill, and today we are sitting down with Carla Metter. Carla is the managing partner at Near Search Group, and her experience working with construction companies hiring needs for over 20 years is going to give us some really awesome insights today in helping employees and individuals improve their opportunities in their career. So thank you, Carla, for joining us today. We're excited to have you. Well, thanks, thanks, Mike. I appreciate the invite and looking forward to a, a spirited conversation. <laughs> I'm sure it will be. Um, so before we jump into the dialogue too much, can you give our listeners just a little bit of your background and experience? Sure. Um, I kind of I came up through the sales side of the house and have sold a variety of things, but uh, often with two construction firms. Uh, usually tied to IT. I love technology. I worked my way into management and a hiring role and then doing an executive and as an owner, as you know, my past. And then um, decided uh, I had the chance to join a partner and uh, create our own search firm. So now we help other owners and individuals looking for better jobs. We help those folks and uh, We've got over, as you said, over 20 years experience and a lot of uh, expertise in IT and construction. That's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to the conversation today. So I guess to kind of get things started off, the first thing I'm wondering, moving up the corporate ladder uh, or at least improving someone's role out at a project or a job site or within a construction company is usually everybody's goal. Everybody wants to move up and improve and grow. Uh, it used to be back in the day, you could work hard, bury your head and just kind of do your thing. And eventually your boss would notice and you would get promoted and have new opportunities. That doesn't seem to be the case today for, for some reason. Why do you think that is and maybe what's changed? Um, it, it's that, and that's a good insight. I do think it has changed. Um, we, one, we have a more turnover, even at a management level or companies buying other companies. You used to have a mom and pop forever for 30 years. Then you get bought out and you have different management. So number one, it's hard to get noticed if your, your boss is changing every year and or your company's getting bought out or moved, et cetera. And then number two, we just live in a society that's more showmanship for maybe lack of better words, where social media, things like LinkedIn, Facebook, and those things are predominant. And we're, we're, um, we're just a society now that catches bits and glimpses. And you want to make sure that you're part of that new wave and that you're capturing bits and glimpses of your best and, and able to present that to whoever is your new team lead or owner. Yeah, that's interesting. So it sounds almost like people need to be more aware of marketing themselves aside from just working hard. Is that kind of what you're saying? Absolutely. Um, we tell people to market themselves like for a small business, actually, and looking to garner a new client, put um, the same amount of uh, emphasis and detail into what you want and how to present yourself. It's no longer heads down, work hard. They'll see me and they'll reward me. It's almost like the squeaky wheel gets the grease. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's a valuable insight, and I think you're really on to something there. So what what can an employee do within an organization to align themselves with that success and make themselves more kind of refreshed in that light that you're talking about? There's a lot there, and, and I'll just hit the highlights and certainly dive in anywhere you want. Um, number one, I always, me personally, find some a coach or a mentor in the group. Most folks 
feel like it's a compliment or an honor to have somebody come up and say, hey, you mind teaching me a few things? You have to be able to humble yourself to work with somebody and get some tips from them. And, and if they're in your tutelage, if you will, they will can often help you get up the ladder. And that's worked for me as well. I think um, social media. Things like LinkedIn, pay attention to your background, the picture, make sure you get a lot of references long before you're looking, get them along the way. As soon as you finish a great project and you have a really happy customer, get that reference then, don't ask 10 years later. So build your portfolio, if you will, your marketing material. We always kind of caution folks too, to be careful what you put on Facebook if you're looking to get new customers or if you're looking to get a new job. Um, and also in work, it's just being a cultural fit and being able to, show where you add value. And I really thought about this. There's, there's several ways, but it can be, you can raise revenue. You can, you know, have add-ons and, and, and produce more. You can help cost efficiencies and, and, and improvement, but you can also just be a great morale person. That, that time when uh, the power went out and you ran and bought up a bunch of extra battery packs and gave it to the crew, what are you doing and how do you showcase that and let people know without looking like you're always bragging? And there's a fine line and it takes practice. Yeah, lots, lots of great points in that uh, bit of information you shared there. So as far as really impressing management or, or doing those little things, are there some little tips or secrets that, that you think somebody could utilize to, to do that if they're not already actively or proactively doing those things? Absolutely. Um, I think one, mirror your audience. So um, if you're in front of a manager who, let's say, likes to golf, maybe make that a little bit of your interest. You're going to have to look for something connection. It has been proven people tend to hire people that are like them. Notice I didn't say they like. I said that are like them. So if you're a curmudgeon and a grumpy personality, they kind of tend to hire that, that. So we always tell people to mirror their environment. If they're a jokester, you and I are very outgoing and talkative. That's a plus. Some places, of, you know, telling jokes isn't. So I think the biggest thing is that you fit in to that, that the culture. And then again, to be seen is uh, to make sure that when you're doing something that you find a way to highlight it. And that can be verbally, maybe a, a peer gives you a kudos. This is what happened and this is how I solved it. That's not cocky. This happened, this broke. I stepped in and this is how I fixed it. And you can always at the end, could I do anything better? Managers are like, if I get something like that, I'm like, wow, this person really takes this company seriously, their job and wants to improve. Yeah, I love earlier you, you mentioned uh, LinkedIn and some of these other tools. And I know on LinkedIn, you can recommend somebody or you can request a recommendation. So that might be a way uh, from what you're saying. Oh, absolutely. I think it's an underutilized tool. Understand as companies get bigger, HR departments in a lot of companies now always look at your LinkedIn and always look to see if they can find your Facebook. That's 80% of the companies now from the data that I read. So make sure you have a great background picture. You have a great picture of yourself, um, whatever that might mean for whatever job that you have, as well as that you, you have detail. And the, uh, to me, other than the, the relevant pictures would be the references. As you do accomplishments, it can kind of be your resume. Mike, close this project under budget and early. Mike um, did this and this, and you're showing that um, trajectory of your career, and it's extremely valuable. LinkedIn is used by so many people now, and there's still people that aren't on it in our industry, and even at the beginning level, the um, entry level, I would encourage everyone to get on LinkedIn and really spruce it up. Yeah, lots of great advice there. So, so what I'm also hearing is you're saying strike while the iron's hot, document, 
make sure that there's a trail of the goodness that you've helped provide for your employer? Probably a lot of things I'm going to say are obvious today, but that's probably the least obvious. And you're absolutely right because you will forget. You don't remember some of the brilliance you did 10 years ago, but it may be applicable to a new job that, again, a lot of the questions they ask are, what do you do in a tough circumstance? Mm -hmm. That's a great question I would ask people. What If this happened, what would you do? And what a great example of our, our systems crash and our building fell apart and this individual stepped in, but you need to capture it while they're there and they're happy. When you try to go back and collect this information, it's stale, it's dated, and often people forget. Until It's not until I start interviewing and bringing these pieces out that I see that they've done some incredible things, but most of us have never been instructed, instructed or taught how to showcase our strengths. Yeah, that, that's uh, very underutilized from my view as well. Um, what do you think the role is for maybe employees to, I guess, showcase themselves even to other, other businesses within their industry? I mean, is, there, is that a part of this where you're making sure you're visible to other potential employers? Absolutely. So loyal, of course, of course, we want to be loyal, but that can come into play, right? Absolutely. Well, if things change, you might want to move, you might want a different career path, uh, career and you've hit, hit the ceiling. Uh, absolutely. LinkedIn is a great way. A lot of people don't know there's a little button that you can click that says, seeking employment, but generally other people don't see it, but recruiters do. You can uh, kind of give signals that way. I think other things you can do are join user groups. I know on LinkedIn, there's a lot of great construction groups. Find what is in your niche particularly and where you want to go. Always remember, it's not where you've been, not necessarily what you're doing now. If you want to grow, it's what you want to grow into. So if you want to grow into a project manager, I would suggest obviously joining that, that forum and learning about that. I find the user groups, whether they're in person or virtual, that matters. And again, finding that person that you make a connection with that's willing to help or, uh, you know, you ask and network. Uh, and I'm finally always networking is the biggest piece. And I I've even been able to network off LinkedIn. You kind of, it's like Facebook. You develop a friendship, if you will. You just like, hey, help me out. And, you know, I'll help you out. Yeah, I love that. And I think to your same point, if you're sharing valuable content on LinkedIn that's additive and inspiring or helpful in some way, that also adds to your resume. Just like a personal social media post that is something positive and encouraging and something that you're that you're proud of and that you'd be okay with your grandmother to see, so to speak. Is, is that kind of what you're saying? Absolutely. Uh, again, sometimes what you put can hurt you. So just make sure it is showcasing your professionalism. And I would always say your niche, what I'm seeing in all industries is things are becoming more, uh, you're less of a generous. If, if you're a bricklayer, you're a bricklayer. Mm -hmm. And you want to show that you are the subject matter expert in what you do. And it could be shoveling, making, doing a ditch. But what is it that you do better than anyone else on your crew and showcase that and get references for it and join a forum? Yeah, that's great. So what about somebody who maybe they are laying bricks or digging ditches but they have an aspiration to move into the office eventually. What can somebody like that do to try and create an opportunity where they can upgrade their position in their view? Okay, great question. Number one, let your manager know and let HR know if they're too, if they, they have an HR department. I can say as a manager, and you might concur, sometimes we just forget. We just think they're happy laying bricks 10 years down the road, but maybe their back's starting to hurt and they would like a change. And understanding as well, people are allowed to change. Maybe they were happy three months ago, but now it's the onus is on that person to say, hey, Mike, I've been laying bricks for you for 10 years. You're my manager. I would like to uh, do estimates, take calls and do estimates and go out on the job site, do estimates, come back and write them up. Can you teach me how? Let me shadow or give me a mentor. So I think understanding what it is you want to do 
and being able to articulate that and then reaching out to your manager. And like I said, HR is makes the best sense for the, for the quickest path if you want to stay in the company that you're in. Oh, that's great. So what about, let's say somebody moves from the field to the office and they maybe they lean technically uh, in one regard or another. They, they like computers, they like IT. What can they do to stand out in a, in a more technical role? And then they, if they like computers and technology, um, I always encourage everyone, one, on, uh, on your own time to show initiative, learn, maybe it's AutoCAD, learn more about the computer, social media. Um, there's a lot of classes, often free or near free, that you can take now. A lot of companies offer that as part of their um, HR employment package, and people don't even know it. There are free online classes for uh, the betterment of you and your career. So always be learning and be soaking up that knowledge and technology. It's doubling itself every six months. So what are you doing to say relevant and current? Or walk in and say, hey, Mike, why aren't we using Zoom meetings more during COVID? Those type of things. So you're on the cutting edge of that. And, and, and you do not have to be with the company long or a technical expert to find a couple of neat little apps or tools that can really make a difference. And people are all the time bringing something to me that I've never heard of. And it's so cool and can help the business. And I think things like that and IT that don't take a team, it's not a huge software conversion or hardware. It's something simple that can be effective for the company. Yeah, so you're, you're very experienced in this field. Obviously, you've been a recruiter and helped hire and find talent for decades now. Um, even at the young age of 28, is that right? About That's correct. Uh, oh. 29 in July. Oh, good for you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get your card out for sure. So awesome. Uh, um, but uh, having said that, I can imagine there are times when you look at a resume or you look at somebody's portfolio and there are things that really stand out and you think, wow, this person is very hireable. What are some of those things that you look for and that really seem to be a no-brainer for places? Good. Great question. And obviously it depends on the job, but if it's at a certain level, a degree. Um, that does still matter when we're talking more inside the office, a degree in ideally your field of engineering, if you're an architect, what have you. Um, uh, tenure, stability, kind of a rule now is about three years or more. Um, mm -hmm. It used to be five or 10. But if you stay with a job every three years or so or more, that shows stability. Then I know another thing that we're looking for is progression. So if if I am at WorkMax and I've been there five years and I'm and oftentimes we are doing the same role, but what have I been doing to show progression in that role? An example might be winning a contest, winning an award, um, uh, added responsibility. It's not always a promotion or a job, a title change, but people are looking for someone that shows that they're learning and gaining a new territory or they learned a new skill, those things are really important. Yeah, and in our current environment, obviously some industries are really struggling if you're in the hospitality or other areas where yes. business is just down. What do people in those positions or situations have to do to remain employed? Are there any tips or tricks or things that you would recommend? Well, in hospitality, you're right. That is that is a down market, but I'm part, our group's part of SRA, and that is one of the top 10 search firms in the country. And hospitality's killing it. And they found ways to put repurpose those folks and put them in different jobs. And again, not an expert in that and what all that they do, but there are um, companies that are doing quite well. So you have to, in times like this, you have to look at what skills that you have and how that can be transferable into a booming business, whether that's delivering, whether that's doing banquets, whether or, or just, I don't know, there's just all kinds of different things that people are looking for. 
Yeah. So what? So does how does that translate to construction or engineering or architecture? What are the differences there? I'm I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, how that uh, to construction? So if it's down. Um, how you want to um, look if you're being laid off, et cetera, obviously you're going to look for the company's hiring. I would recommend two things immediately, LinkedIn mm -hmm. and hooking up with a great recruiter or headhunting firm. Um, the reason LinkedIn, it shows a lot of jobs. It'll show, and a lot of people don't know this, but it does show if you can click on jobs, you can search on location and what your field is. And also um, another good thing, I like Indeed. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies, but Indeed.com is free. You can sign up and it will gather all the jobs within the parameters that you set and deliver it to you. So you don't have to go on every website, but obviously you're going to look at competitors, look at your network. But to technology wise, indeed, LinkedIn, and then I would hook up with the good recruiter, because as we know, some of the best jobs are never advertised or put on the website, they want it on the download, especially we've got a switch now where we're probably replacing someone so it, even HR doesn't have that role so uh, if you do all these things and you have a good resume there's still a lot of great jobs out there yeah we we use indeed here and it is a it is a great tool we make sure every every position gets posted there and and actually I got feedback I was doing an interview just the other day for a new position we're hiring and uh, this candidate said that they were getting notices from Indeed as if it was us saying, hey, we're potentially interested in you coming in for an interview. And basically they took them through, it was a bot basically. A pre-interview. Yeah, basically the system was pre-interviewing them to see if they're a qualified candidate. And what that did is that encouraged this person to apply. And so even though we didn't intentionally do that, uh, his skills matched some of the requirements we had and so Indeed automated that. And actually, I just sent an offer letter out this morning. So it was it worked. Well, that's a great testament to you using that technology as a business owner to increase your uh, hiring pool. And they are doing, um, which with a lot of these different sites are doing pre-interviews. They're screening. They're mm -hmm. looking for keywords. They're searching on keywords. They're looking at the salary ranges. If you have a max of, say, 70K and somebody wants 90, it's already filtering out things for you and ideally delivering in kind of a tunnel the uh, cream of the crop that are the best fits for you. Yeah, that's great. I, I think uh, some of the points you've you've nailed down uh, the three years. That's an interesting uh, thing, and I would agree with that. It kind of okay. makes sense to me. If it was a, if they're eight months or a year, a year and a half at eight different positions, I know we probably got a challenge with this individual. Correct. Knitting and sticking with something. So, um, and then as far as, so we talked about hospitality construction also and, and kind of the up and down market, different challenges that we have. What, uh, when you're interviewing or trying to find or fill positions for candidates in construction, what, can you just step through that process, what you're looking at, what types of things that you're doing so that maybe somebody who's looking to apply for a position might have a peek into what a, a recruiter like yourself might be looking for. Absolutely. So some of it we hit on, but it's good to reiterate in, in, in here. Um, one, obviously a um, resume that showcases their talent, shows that progression, that they have a job hopped. If they've had a couple of, um, of, of uh, reasons that they had to move on, I like a little quick blip in the resume because we only get about 10 seconds, if you can believe that's the studies, 10 seconds for a hiring manager that's going to look at your resume. So that summary must sing your praises and, and, and succinctly to say what job you're going for, as well as, again, that progression and adding value um, that you to the current organizations that you're at. I think that's huge. Another thing is keywords. I, I oddly probably one of the, the most things that I do is tell people you do this if uh, but it's not 
in, in your resume throughout. So making sure whatever the keywords are, whatever programs you use, whatever equipment, tools, um, if you're traveling and locations, put all of those things in because a lot of us do keyword searches. So make sure those keywords are in there. Then when I actually talk to the person, uh, we're looking for the obvious things, cultural fit. And again, that can be different at different organizations. We like to use tools like Zoom. We listen very closely to our clients and what uh, culture they're building and need. And some are more particular than others. But uh, we find so we try to get to know them and warm up and get that right cultural fit as well. Um, and, and obviously LinkedIn and any of your extracurricular activities throw in there somewhere. But I think a LinkedIn presence is important. Yeah, lots of great pointers there. So I hope the listeners are taking notes if they're if they're in a position or possibly going to be in a position where they want to change or move to a new organization. Uh, I think, like you mentioned, Carla, uh, at least three years at a job fits, shows stability. So um, I, I think in this day and age, for sure, people do tend to move around quite a bit more than historically. You don't hear of very many 30, 40 year employees anymore. No, and if they have, the name of the company's changed three times. <laughs> that that's, could be very true. So, uh, so kind of winding things up a little bit, um, just like to ask a few questions here at the end of you personally. So what's sure. one skill, Carla, that you feel like you've kind of mastered in your professional career that served you well? Um, I would say in what I do in almost anything, staying in touch with people. I'm a people person. I've, I've stayed in touch with you, stayed in touch with others. I, you reach out and you genuinely make a connection and you care. So staying in touch, and it may be once a year, but I feel like if I was there with you right now, it would be as if no time had changed. Go out to lunch and have a good time. So I think that's make that connection and staying in touch with people that um, I resonate with. Yeah, relationships matter, don't they? Absolutely. So what about Carla's superpower? Is there something else besides relationships that you feel like you really is, have in your wheelhouse and you, you just uh, lick your chops every time you get an opportunity to do this certain thing? I, I think just more just on a broader scope, I listen to what other people say my energy level and you can probably attest to that people are like wow if you've met her been in the room with her you know it um that there is some cultivating to that and uh just like you exercise or meditation prayer eating right being healthy positive aspects but i've always had a lot of energy and so when I see something, I get excited because I have energy. If you, even if something good comes your way, but you don't have the energy to deal with it, um, it's hard. So I think uh, energy, I hope. Love that. Yeah, I would completely agree. You are a firecracker. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for me to just sit still in this chair for 30 minutes. <laughs> well, you're doing a great job. So thanks for, for uh, putting your best foot forward on this. Um, so another thing, what, so what is, uh, what is the importance of data in your business? What does it do for you and, and why is data so important? Um, I think for any business of any size, it is now the business analytics, um, using data to help make future better decisions. A couple of things I've mentioned during this interview, we know that the average hiring manager spends 10 seconds on a resume to decide if they're going on and they rarely get to page two. We know that job a job hoppers anything less than three years. An older person reading it might think it's five or 10, but it's three. So we use these things to understand and educate sometimes our customers what's 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 the market what's real and what's to be expected so data helps you predict what's going what's happening and what's going to happen in the future what we're going to see more of and, and of course and all of that allows you to build your business and build your revenue oh that's great yeah lots of great stuff here great pointers again i hope everyone's taking notes um what about are there any mistakes you've made that you wish you could go back and change in business? Something that you have since learned from and think, oh man, what, you know, why did I do that? Is there anything you want to share with us? 
Sure. Um, for the most part, like everybody, it happens for a reason and you have to be okay with that. But for me and for others often, I think it's it's garnering and getting input from others and accepting that. Being open, especially when you're younger, it's a little hard to humble yourself and ask, hey, Mike, what could I do better? But it is getting input from the outside. And maybe that's even outside your organization. If you're having trouble with somebody in the office, maybe talk to a, a coach, a, a life coach, but they, you know, professional level, but it is seeking outside input and not thinking that you have to fix everything on your own. Yeah. So I'm hearing being vulnerable is okay. Yes. And that is hard for some of us. And I think that was hard, harder for me when I was younger. And, and as you get older, not so much. You actually have to be very secure to ask another person for help or how can I be better? What can I do to be better in this role? Yeah, I love that. Love that. So just to wrap up, last question. So what, if there's one thing that you want listeners to walk away from this conversation today with, what would that be? It's going to be motivational. If you want it, it's there. You can find it in this market, in any market that we are always seeing jobs for good people. So if you see that job that you want or that client that you want, you want a huge client, you keep at it and try different things. Use social media, send them an interesting link, tout yourself, tout your company, but you've got to be your own small business, if you will, and showcase your talents. And if you do that and do it enough to the right people, it will happen. You've just got to continue to, um, to again, uh, market yourself well. I love that. I've, I've heard uh, others say we are all CEOs of ourself, the business. And so yep. it sounds like kind of what you're saying. Absolutely. Love it. Well, thank you, Carla, for the conversation today. Had so much fun and hoping to connect again down the road as we continue our long-term friendship. And again, you've, you've made an impression on me and our organization. And that's why even after 10 or 12 years or whatever it's been, uh, we can pick up a conversation like this nice and easy. I, absolutely. And I, I do want to add this, that um, I appreciate it too. I um, Same thing, we could get in a room and it would be like time hasn't stopped, ha hasn't moved forward at all. I think that what you have is a great product, knowing IT and construction. I was always impressed with WorkMax and About Time and what y'all are doing and what you're about. And I do think that's going to be, we all know, technology is key. And I think you heard that a lot throughout my points today with LinkedIn and social media, et cetera, uh, it's going to be technology. Well, thank you. That's fantastic. So thanks, Carla. And thanks again for the listeners for joining us on the Mobile Workforce Podcast today, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you enjoyed the conversation Carla and I had today and were able to gain some helpful tips and insights, please give us a rating and a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. Those ratings and reviews help us a great deal to continue to bring these valuable conversations to our listeners to help you improve your business and your life.